Not good, good there. That is why Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho had the best debut in WWE history. All right, really? the rock's out there in the middle of the ring. He's cutting his promo, and all of a sudden, that countdown that we had been seeing for a month, it all of a sudden appears on the screen. The rock turns around like he starts pacing back and forth. He puts the glasses up, and then boom, it hits zero. Black out of the arena, explosion. It's going down, bitch. Break the walls down. Break down the walls. Jericho had the hardest intro in WWE history. Listen, I cannot deny I was there when that countdown was happening. I could not wait to see what was going on. When the clock hit zero, and this old random ass nigga who I never knew came out, I was Come like, on. Come on. Who is this? Who? Who is this nigga? <laughs> the pony. Oh, I was like, who is this? Come on, Will. Who and the he, fuck is this? Will. My man came out to the ring and hit him with a welcome to Raw is Jericho. That was dope. That they was dope. In, they were sold on this character from jump. That was dope. But again, at the time for a dude, I did not know. Come I was on. just like, okay. And again, as I said, and I'll say it again. Yeah, man. He went toe to toe. Chris Jericho is the best B player of all time. The first undisputed champion in WWE history. He beat The Rock and Stone Cold in the same night, Will. Give that man his respect. Mm -hmm. And he lost it at WrestleMania to Triple H and never got it back again. Ever. Hey, Finn Balor was the first Universal champion. And lost it. He never got that back. He lost it the next day. Had Kane to go was, in. was the heavyweight champion for 24 hours. Who? Kane. Kane. Connie for my little cousin and stuff. Uh, but yeah, so. But anyway, uh, welcome to Games That Define Us. Uh, of course, you, as y'all see, we had, we had started a, a wrestling debate and everything like that. Man, we might we might have to bring that here to all death game and just we might have to bring that to all death yeah. game. Y'all let us know. But um I am Will Farrow. Cleo Thomas aka Mr. Slick Living. Uh Patrick is you know fighting dragons in the uh, sky kingdom right now for the cloud village and stuff like that. So he says that the campaign is almost finished and he is going to join us soon. So instead of getting started with the normal of games that define us, we want to add a new segment in. Mm -hmm. That is called the On This Day. So, of course, we have had over, man, thousands upon thousands of game titles drop throughout the years, of course. And so now I think there's a dope catalog of anniversaries when stuff drops. Yes. So if you are following us on IG, uh, All Death Gaming, you would know that today is the 25th anniversary of Daytona USA. Do you remember Daytona USA on Sega Saturn? It was the Sega Saturn? Sega Saturn. You you listen, a none of us in the listen, in the almost four years that we've known each other, none of us have brought up Sega Saturn. Nope. Whatsoever it has to be a failed console at that point, man. Like, it was it any this Genesis is iconic, but the Sega Saturn, what did it even look like? It, it was I, a failed console, it was a failed it was console. a what? It was a failed console. It pretty much put you know, that's why the dream it, it pretty much was the beginning of the Dreamcast failure, too. So, yeah, but I mean, so it had some good games. So, yeah. this whole time, I thought that the Sega, um. Dreamcast was the first console from Sega to use CDs and discs. It was nah, the Saturn. It was Saturn. And it was thin, too. They were thin. They were thin like a PlayStation case, but they came like this big. They were tall, but they were real thin cases that you could open up and the CD was in there. It was almost like Sega wanted to bring PC to their new console, but it just it didn't work. Nope. It just didn't for some reason, man, just the, the video game gods and the, and the people just were not having it, man. But they did have a few classics that they did pull out, and Daytona USA was one of them. It dropped today, 25 years ago, 1995, man. 1995, I think, was a good year. 
What Think happened about- in 1995? We had that game drop. What else happened in the year 1995? Oh, NBA Finals, the first thing that comes up. Who was in the 1995 NBA Finals? It looked like it was the Rockets versus the Magic? Yeah. Akuma yes. Lajon versus a young Shaquille O'Neal. Yep. Yep. Let's not, not bad. forget, that is when Coolio's Gangster Paradise came out. Nice. Still one of the hardest songs to this day. Is it? It is. It is. You listen. When that chorus hit, Brad, this is what you do. I want you to get in a muscle car. I want you to drive at 2 in the morning in the hood, and I want you to be playing Gangsta's Paradise. You go feel every piece of that song as you drive. When that chorus hit, it's a rap. It is a rap for you, sir. Let me remind you some other songs that came out in 1995. Dear Mama, Tupac Shakur. Facts. One of my favorite records by Adina Howard, Freak Like Me. Love that record. Uh, Exhale by uh, Whitney Houston. Oh, my God. Someone to Love by John B. Yeah, 1995 had hits, bro. Hey, man, and let's not forget the that year was a year that lived in infamy. Hmm. The juice. O.J. Simpson was on trial. In the 1995 year. Yes, yes. yes. O.J. Simpson was out here with his life on the line with that fat ass head of his just trying to make it out. Toy Story. Toy Story. Seven with Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman. Bad Boys. Braveheart. The first Mortal Kombat movie. Oh, man. Desperado. Die Hard with a Vengeance. A goofy movie. Came out in 1995. Oh, yeah, no, that's it. I'm sorry. And in the day of all 90s, 95 might be the, 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 the greatest year of all. Listen, we talk about 97 real hard, but 95, man, um, we might need to look, we got some show ideas, man. We might need to revisit to this as a debate, like, like years versus years, like you know, like how we do great taste, like the best years, like 95 versus 97, 93 versus 96. And just go head to head. I think that'll be a joke. Look at this, man. We just this is sharp tank right now. Right off the top, man. This right off. That was a beautiful year, man. So yeah, I love that idea though of going uh going uh year for year, 365 days versus the other 365 days. Why not? Oh yeah. Uh so also another game that dropped to uh today in 2010, which is now uh, 10 years old as well. Skate three. Oh wow. Skate. I never played the skates, man. Skate was skate was cool. I think I think it was either Skate Two or Skate Three had a very good storyline because basically you were just it was kind of like Tony Hawk. You were on the come up, trying to make your uh your way into the uh in, into the industry as a skater, and they would have you do like magazine covers to where you would have to hit a move, and they was like, you hit this move, this is gonna be the cover of your magazine, but you had to do it yourself. And right, they were having to gain different points and stuff from doing this and different uh you know sections and places and so I, I i enjoyed skating but just like most skateboard games you kind of they run their course you kind of just like all right i can kind of have a feel of the skateboard stuff I'm, I'm ready to move on to something else yeah shout out to skate man i saw i saw there was a news article something about they are looking to reboot the skate series but not for console mm. mobile then it doesn't count no then it doesn't count it doesn't count it don't count no 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 no. it doesn't count it doesn't but, count. Kadeem, you're saying that doesn't count, but meanwhile, you went and played all the Kingdom Hearts games that were for the Nintendo DS. I don't want to hear that. No, you that's not the same thing. That's not the same thing. Mobile games on a phone and me playing my DS or my PSP or my Vita is not the same thing. They're going to make you pay for everything on that mobile phone. You want new wheels? Microtransaction. Exactly. You want new trucks? Microtransaction. Exactly. You want to do Tony Hawk's 900? Microtransaction. Yep. What? I mean, I don't know why you were wasting your time playing Kingdom Hearts at all, but... Let's not do this. Will, let's not do this. Listen, man, look, I'm going to let y'all know now, this is bitter Pharaoh week. I'm just letting y'all know, because... That's fair warning. I I look, I said this on my live yesterday, I blame all the Black people for what happened yesterday. 
Didn't know if you watched Black Blasphemy. Didn't nobody tell me the five heartbeats wasn't a real group. That was a big shock to everyone's system, bro. The chat, the comments, it split right down the middle. You're not alone. A lot of people thought the five heartbeats were a real group. Loela, don't you tell me not to start in the chats, man. I, I, we still harping on this. I, I went to sleep and I woke up thinking about this, man. I even went, looked on iTunes. I was like, maybe there's like a special edition we didn't look up. There is no five. I, you know what I kept wondering too? I, and I just, it made me feel most stupid because I was like, all the talk black people keep talking about with the five heartbeats, I was like, you know, why ain't they never performed at the BET Awards? Uh -huh. I was like, why have, haven't they been putting like any kind of Hall of Fames yet? Where's their honorary awards? Where are they at? Yeah, I was like, where's the then and now on them? I, nope. I, and I, I started, I was like, that's because they don't exist. Nope. But this whole time, man, you were living in a world thinking the five heartbeats were a real group with Robert Townsend starring as one of them. The five heartbeats is a parody. And yes. that's what y'all should start calling it. Oh, it ain't parody's, parody's a strong word. CB4, five heartbeats. That's disrespectful. No, it's not. Why? Why because is it? Because Chris Rock and CB4 was for sure a parody. It was satire. They were, they were clowning. It was nothing but shucking and jiving. It is a parody. How you want to take parody is on you. But we're going to move forward. We are going to move forward. We're not going to, we're not going to harp on this no more. I just wanted to get that out there that Black Blasphemy is a good thing to have in this world right now because we unlocking a whole bunch of things in this industry. But um, I guess you know since Pat is still fighting dragons in uh, the Sky, uh, Sky Kingdom, uh, I yeah. guess we can go ahead and uh, what's that? He said he needed about uh, 10, 15 minutes, and that was like five minutes ago. So he'll be here. Okay. He's going to be here, y'all. So, you know, everybody that's here for the cloud as well, he is coming in. But um, I do know what parodies mean. Brandon Walker in the chat it is a parody. I don't care what nobody says. It is based off of somebody else, and there was some comedy in it. I laughed. So that makes it a parody. Last movie, really quick, I just want to mention that came out in 1995. Money Train. Mon Money Train, man. Shout out uh, Chris Tucker, man. That's not that's not that one. Money oh, shit, wrong one. Money Talks. That's, that's, that's Money Talks. Money Train had Wesley Snipes and Jennifer Lopez and my man Woody Harrelson. Woody, dang. They done a lot of movies together. What was another one you said came out? Jumanji? Jumanji, 1995, uh, 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 Batman Forever. I think that's the one with Val Kilmer. Trash. trash. All trash. All Desmond, trash. Uh, uh, like you said, Braveheart, uh, The Great Giving the Lamb. Another another Lamb Before Time movie. Lamb Before. I don't. I don't. Look. We talked about this. There's nothing about it. There's nothing. Three Ninjas. Knuckle up. Don't know which that one was. I was never a fan of the Three Ninjas. I never got into that series. Surf Ninjas was fire. Y'all ever seen Surf, Surf Ninjas? Ninjas? What the hell is Surf? Surf? So, man, let me tell y'all about Surf Ninjas. I would not recommend you watch it now. You need to watch it back then. Uh, but it starred, oh, what is this? Uh, it starred Eddie Ray. Matter of fact, do you remember uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2? The little Asian kid? Yeah, the pizza guy. It starred him, and it starred Deuce Bigelow, Mel Gigolo. Uh, but the dude from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, uh, Eddie Reyes, I think is his name. Him and his brother were basically like uh, prince. They were they were royalty in like I think Thailand or some stuff like that. But they uh, village and everything got taken over by Colonel Zai. And guess who Colonel Zai was played by? Who? Leslie Nielsen. R.I.P. Leslie Nielsen was Kurt was a emperor was a white emperor that was taking over the world. I gotta look this cast up. And so they had this dude with an eye patch that dropped them off. 
to a guy that was uh, also a, a, a boatsman there. And so they had them growing up in the shores. I think it was Santa Monica too, uh, on the beach. So they became surfers and stuff like that. But then, you know, of course, they found out where they were trying to kill them. So now they got to start training them. What was so dope about it, and the reason why I bring that up is because the youngest one had a game gear. It was a Sega game gear. And it had to kind of do with something like, because they kind of had like mystical powers about them too. It was it was faint and subtle, but it wasn't like nothing like kind of big, but it was it, it kind of like had that spirit to it. And he had a game gear that pretty much like showed him what was about to happen, but in video games. So like it would show back to him, like uh, his uh, brother was fighting like a Chinese restaurant. They was kicking ass and stuff. And so it would show him playing it and him selecting like, yo, use the chopsticks. And then his brother would actually pick up the chopsticks and be using them to whoop ass. Another person that was in there, Kelly Hugh from X-Men. Yep, I see Kelly Hugh. The, the only, the, there's two cast members to this Surf Ninjas film that just surprised me. Rob Schneider, Leslie Nielsen. I'm like, okay, there's no way you're topping that. Tone Loke just topped it for me. That what is my last person for me? Why is Tone Loke in this movie? He was a detective. He was a detective because basically when they were trying to come kill him, their house blew up. And so uh, when the house blew up, their dad got kidnapped. And so he's trying to like help them out and trying to figure out what's going on. So like Tone Loke is basically just on the ride with it and stuff like that. And they take him like all the way to Thailand and stuff like that where they got to fight Leslie Nielsen and his army. And then, like, Leslie Nielsen got, like, crushed by an a, a elephant. So, like, half of him is, like, mechanical, and he can't get wet and stuff. It's just, bro, it is hilarious. But it was a great film back then. If you want to check it out, you can. But I'm not saying, like, you have to see it. But it was a good film. Everyone in the chat is like, Cleo, you got to watch this film. And I'm catching major Johnny Tsunami vibes. Way before uh, him, way before him, bro. I'm telling you, it was, I enjoy it. I watch, like, Richard, I watch it now. Like, if you put it on right now, I'll sit here and watch Surf Ninja. Yo, you brought up the, the, the Sega Game Gear. Now, let me tell you about this. I never had one. Kadeem, we never had a Sega Game Gear, ever. Nope. But what I would call about this, this console was how big it was, one. It was way bigger than a Game Boy. Mm -hmm. um, the screen was dead center in the middle, right? And you had the D-pad on the left, obviously, and you had your buttons on the right. But what I recall the most being the stupidest thing about this design, and correct me if I'm wrong, didn't you have to put batteries on both sides of the console? Hmm. I'm not too sure. I, I'm not sure. I don't remember. Game Gear batteries. Did they go right behind it, or were they on? I thought it was, at the, I thought it was under. Let me see. Someone said yeah, so hold on. It might it might be like that. That one, like uh, yeah, like that's the game gear right there. That was I I loved it because it had Sonic. Yeah, games. see, I wasn't tripping. That's for that's sure what it was. Yeah. I didn't understand that. That bro, was the I, listen, it, 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 was, it was to travel with, bro. Again, you gotta remember, man. You had Nintendo, some folks had Sega. Like, as much as y'all like, like Pat loves Mario. Mario is what this dude grew up on. And that's probably what uh, one of the things that helped him get in the game. And just like most gamers, me, it was Sonic. Sonic is what really turned me into a gamer. And so it's like to have a portable game system where I could play Sonic, Contra, yeah. portable? Like, okay. especially as a kid. Like, bro, like, you have no idea what it's like going climb a tree and then just sitting in there playing game gear. Yeah, shout out to well, everyone, that, friends, shout out to everyone that knows in this chat that it used six AA batteries and it died really fast. So it was a it battery was I remember. Yeah. We had a cousin who had one. And yeah. again, again uh, the reason I bring up the whole batteries being separated part was because you had to take off. Of course, they had a cover. And we're kids. So once you take that cover off and you lose one, now the rest of the time you're trying to make sure the batteries don't fall oh, out. Hilarious, bro. Freezing the shit out of one of the sides, getting the radiation on your damn fingertips. Listen, I wouldn't even worry about no radiation. I can't tell you how pissed off I was when you were fighting Dr. Robotnik and one of them batteries slipped out and the game cut off. No. And you ready to chunk that motherfucker? No. So, and then look, this, this is how innovative those motherfuckers were. 
to even bypass that. Once you lost the back, they was like, fuck it, go get some duct tape. Duct, duct tape that hole to the back. Batteries be sticking on the duct tape when you pull it out. Like all four of them come out. And then everyone you put pack in and then just they talking about it in the chat, bro. People used to tape up the back of their game. Yeah, bro. Like if you was a game, if you was a gamer, the thing was, bro, like, especially for me growing up in the country and like, you know, like growing up with minimal money and stuff like that. I don't want to call those poor, but uh you know, whatever. But look at this shit. Look at the design of this thing. That shit was dope, bro. That shit was dope. And you gotta remember, I got giant hands and I had these since. No, you, so, it's just crazy. Like Sega, like okay, Nintendo, they launched the Game Boy. They came with a freaking slew of different video games, right? Yeah, but it wasn't in color either. You gotta remember, like for a while, this was the only thing portable in color. Ah, uh, that's what made this last a little bit. So the thing is, it really was just Sega was one. Of, I, and I hate to say, I hate to say this about Sega, but I really am gonna have to say it. Sega was great as a filler for Nintendo. Like, if Nintendo was Marvel C Cinematic Universe, Sega was Ant-Man or Guardians okay. of the Galaxy. Okay. Dope films, but it's not the ones that are supposed to bring in and break the box office. Big facts. Big like, facts. when that's taking a break, Sega was here serving, helping people, getting people into gaming, and then when Nintendo was ready, it came back out with a vengeance. And at yeah. one point, just like Guardians of the Galaxy, just like Ant-Man, that third rendition, second one, Sega Saturn, was okay. Nobody really got it or understanding it. But I still, it had some replay value, Ant-Man 2, just saying. When the third version came out, Dreamcast, it was like, okay, time to wrap this up, Iron Man 3. Not judging, just throwing those out there. And so that's what Sega was. And then Nintendo continued to pave the way. And then it was time for the new evolution, which was PlayStation and Xbox. Sega, you guys always seem to have a great plan, but your execution was just god awful. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on the ahead. screen. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the screen real quick. And then you tell me, uh, you gonna do tell it. me what we doing with this right here. I remember they had now a you stop freaking... that. You stop that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't what do is that. this, Sega? What were you thinking? What are we a doing? A TV? A what TV? Are we... What are we doing? A TV that ran off of batteries. Get out of here with this. Uh, RC... What is the name of that antenna? We used to have it on the back of our TVs, bro. What do you mean? The little coax? The, huh? the, the little coax antenna? That's an antenna. Coax antenna. Yo, bro. Listen. It ain't about what it looked like, okay? Yes, it is. You can't tell me, again, you cannot tell me you would have not enjoyed being outside with your friends, eating your snacks with Cheeto fingers and Dorito fingers, and you get to watch 15 minutes of Rugrats. That's all you had. Because if you watch any more, that thing was down. Dog, I, I, that thing never worked ever and that antenna was a piece of crap because i remember our cousin had it and it broke on him like in the first two days of him having it see that's yep. because you, that, that's because you la cat so aggressive you need to slow down y'all got buildings everywhere and stuff like that you remember where i'm from ain't no tall buildings man we ain't got nothing hey, to we've all learned on black blasphemy your texas card doesn't save you from everything will first of all i am an adult it's, I am a being, it's right? slipping out of your hands pretty quick that car is flipping pretty quick. No, it ain't. <laughs> my car, my car is like a fun night. Just keeps going in and out, in and out. Can you pull up the uh, the battery pack, Kadeen, that supposedly Sega was selling? Do you I, see it? I can find it. I can oh find my! It. Look, it had it not been for Sega, we wouldn't have the stuff we have right now. Do not wrong. Come on, man. Look, Do nobody not had Sega can. Dreamcast was one of the first consoles that really tried to br bring internet to your console. If you look on the back of the Dreamcast, there's an Ethernet port on there. Is it Ethernet or dial up, Kadeem? It's the Ethernet. I think it would probably dial I think maybe it's still a dial up. No, it was probably broadband at that time already. Dreamcast. Yeah. So Dreamcast was trying to be the first one to gateway us into being able to hop online, play from play against different people around the world. Even before that. I'm pretty sure it was the Super Nintendo. No, no, it was the N64 uh, that had the N64 Super Drive that only released over there in Japan. And yeah, they, they kind of scrapped that N64. idea. Huh? They scrapped that idea, but yeah. Yeah, there was an N64. You would 
get by this thing and you would sit your N64 on top of this big ass attachment and you were able to, uh, they had like a drawing game. They wanted for you to be able to do downloadable content as well for the Super Mario 64 game. Nintendo tried to do it early and they were like, this ain't gonna work. We just gonna scrap this idea. Dreamcast tried to go full speed ahead and it still didn't work. We weren't ready. Somebody has to do it and someone has, look, someone has to fail first. That's what they won't teach you in school. Somebody has to fail first. No one succeeds first. Someone fails first. Then you figure out how to do what they didn't do, and then you win. Yeah. Just think about it. If you're in second the entire time of a race, you are figuring out what this person is doing wrong. And once you've passed him up, you figured out what he did wrong, and now you're in first. I get that. I get what it must talking. fail first, and Sega failed first. Had it not been for them, they wouldn't have got mad and made went to Sony and then made Playstations, and then God of War would have never exist. Um, Xbox, Listen. WWE, America. Listen, I get all that, bro, but we I, I can't ever co-sign the Sega Game Gear. I can't. I can't do it. We don't. It we, the- Cleo, I say this with the utmost respect. We don't need you to. <laughs> if you had it, you knew what it was. We're not. We're not sitting here saying we're going to compete with Game Boy. We we are not. But I'll tell you. I'll tell you where Game Boy went left, though. I'll tell you where Game Boy went left when they got a little too big for their britches. The Game Boy camera and the Game Boy printer. Oh no, I remember the Game Boy printer. Listen, bro, what were they crazy. thinking? That shit was hilarious. My homeboy the had Game one. Game Boy camera, and then you could connect the printer to it. That was about this small, and you print out your little wannabe Polaroid pictures. Yep. Get that shit out of here. That My happened. homeboy had that. We did that, and we realized how stupid we looked printing that shit out. We was like, so um, stupid. You did it once, and, but you had to have it because that was a thing that was out. Look, Game Gear had a great hot girl summer for a few summers. Nobody's comparing it with Game Boy or anything like that. But when it was here, you enjoyed it. And if you missed the wave, that's cool. So there's and- also there's also the Sega uh, Nomad that 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 happened. That's also what happened. Oh my okay. God! I don't what know what this is. I don't know what this is. That is the Sega Genesis Nomad. I just no, this is, no, 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 time, 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 time. This is an actual console that Sega released. Yeah, this is a portable Sega Genesis Nomad. Obviously, it's a portable Sega Genesis. Um, as you know what I mean, it, it, it looks horrible to hold in your hand. Like, look at, look at this, look at the design of it. Like, how can you hold that and play? No, you're not answering my question though. This is an actual product that Sega released and it was, it was the sequel to the, to the, uh, Game Gear. Yep. They tried. Will is absolutely right. They tried. They tried everything. They they walked so everything else could run. I right. never I, knew about this until today, ladies and gentlemen. I had no clue that Sega released a sequel to the <laughs> the Sega Game Gear called the Sega Nomad. What is this? Hey, it's man, huge. Hey man, listen, okay. Somebody gotta crawl before y'all can go. Oh my! And God. I'm just gonna be that guy, and I'm gonna say it. The Nomad was lit. Okay. All right. That's it. This just, just sign up for Sega. Admit it. You're a micro influencer. You're you're an influencer for Sega. Tell us. I when did I not say that? I no, just, no, but you're oh, being paid by Sega. You officially have to be getting a check from Sega. Oh, Sega can send call. me a check any day. Listen, I still got my original set. Okay, man. What are you okay? Doing? What are you doing? What what are you doing? What's up, y'all? Is that a training bra? Why do you have your sister's blouse on? What are you doing? It's a tank top and a posture corrector. No, it's corrector. not. It's a posture corrector. What are you talking about? No, it's, it's not. Pat, Pat, what Stop. are you doing? What are you doing with your bad posture? I- <laughs> I'm on Zoom like seven times a day. I need this to keep my back from turning into an S. So oh, here that's go. not part of the shirt. No. Oh, because so you couldn't see like the skin area. So it yeah, it's like... tank top with a little posture corrector. Oh, so I can, okay. I can no, do like my zooms and my it, screams. If you look thought, at it, it looked like the black parts were attached to the shirt. 
No, it's like a it's like a will it's like a Will Smith holster. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, see when you move the thing on the back. Yeah, the tank was normal when you took it off. Yeah, like a backpack with no pack. <laughs> I was like, whoa. That's whoa. cool. I, I, everybody on the squad is about to buy one. Watch. Oh no, no, that's dope. I, <laughs> I, I have one. I just haven't tried it yet. I do have one. I, I do a lot of Zoom meetings at this time in my life as well, obviously. So oh, yeah. I feel you. I feel you, bro. And I don't you have that posture. My building is uneven. What? Yeah. My building is uneven. I found that out. I build in the slam. It ain't got shit to do with your posture. Yes, it do. It fits me this way. What? <laughs> Just sit up straight. Pat, we're so glad straight. that you are joining this conversation, brother, because we are we're talking about retro consoles. Yes, we started off talking about the Sega Game Gear. Do you remember the Sega Game Gear? Is that the handheld one? That was yeah. the handheld one. It was Hell no, one. I don't I don't I'll miss that. I've never had one. But okay, neither did I, but we talked about it's terrible design with the fact that the batteries would go in the back of it and they were separated. You had to put three batteries on the left and three batteries on the right. And what? Then you, why? I, exactly, stupid, wait, 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 stupid design flaw. And if you ever misplace one of the covers, you had to then duct tape it or keep your fingers pressed up against the back of it to continue playing the game. And it died really, really quick. Did That's you also know that crash. Sega Game Gear had a TV turner? A what? You could watch TV from your Sega, uh, your Sega um, game, game Gear. Look at it. Look at it. That's, that's the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Why are y'all acting like this is not fire? I don't understand. OK, let me just let me just put my where I am out there. Uh, I'm not a fan of portable games, to be honest. Like, uh, I got I had the original Game Boy. I had the Game Boy Color, the Game Boy Advance. Uh, around the time it started going to the DS, that's when I started getting over it. Uh, and then the Game Boy Advance is the one that's sort of like a sidekick, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. I don't think I had anything past the DS. I didn't have a PSP. Um, I didn't. Off. I stopped. I stopped playing. In I used to always play Pokemon in the car. I started getting car sick, so I just. I, 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 if I was gonna play video games, I wanted to do a console. So I kind of fell off the whole um, handheld thing um, until the Switch. So I'm, this isn't really my thing anyways. Cool. However, All I right. was also Game Boy and on, which looked good. I always loved the design of the Game Boy. This would not fly. This looks like the equivalent of a Walkman to the iPod. Okay, so let me, let me hit you with two more facts really quick. Game Boy, do you remember the Game Boy uh, camera? Yeah, that was cool. Do you remember the Game Boy printer? Yeah. Okay, well, you could print out those shitty pictures. Cool. Yeah. Did you know that there was a uh, a sequel to the Sega Game Gear? I didn't know. Is that it right there in the Sonic? That is the Sega Nomad, Pat. The what? <laughs> that is the <laughs> Sega Nomad, a portable Sega Genesis. I thought it was a made-up console. Nope. Turns out Sega actually did release this. Wait, hey, let me let me let me go to gallery view and take a look at this. That is it. And it stuck out like that? That is, you plug in your little Genesis, con I mean, little cart so I mean, Cartridge. technically it's a portable Genesis. If you, Nigga, I mean, that's, that's a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> that's a Sega laptop. Really acting like that's not fire? That shit is ass. I mean, it, <laughs> that shit ain't not great, it, well, it was not a great design for your hands. All right, all right, you two parent households. But Bro, the, it's got nothing to do with money. Put, this, was not be, this was just before us. Can we see it in hand? Can you see any video great. or picture of this, of this console in someone's hand? I can get one in hand, sure. Let me get no, that. So it's, not, it's, not, it's not as big as y'all think. It was, like, don't get me wrong. It was big. It was big, Bruh. but it was like. <laughs> it wasn't that big. No, it wasn't that like the Game Gear was like this big. It, it was, was like, oh snap, supersonic. Did it? <laughs> <think that? laughs> so actually, oh, yo, yeah. no, for real, it was about DS size. <laughs> no, for real shit, it was about DS size. Oh, you hey, got no, 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 hey, what, what's the second oh, thing track you had keeper there? going up to your face like this hey. every time you want to play? Come on. Pat, what's the second thing you picked up? Oh, it was a, uh, it's a, 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 a tray. I was getting. Hey, low key, that was the size of the Nomad, dude. Low key. Really? I think that was the size of the Nomad. The second one, that nah. was. Nah. <laughs> I'm about to, I'm about to pull it up right now. We can see it Shout in hand. KP Balance Artistry. Sega Nomad looks like in hand. Man, now, again, as I said before, you got on here, Pat. Someone had to fail first for everybody else to advance, and that Bro. was. 
Game Boy, when you put the game in, it perfectly lined up with the Game Boy. It's crazy that this is sticking out like a 64. I did yeah. not understand it. I was just like, why? Yeah, that's I a terrible idea. Did the Genesis have six buttons? No. There was, no, yeah, 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 no, yeah, there was, there was, there was, I was talking about this on my Twitch. Why was there remote controllers with just three buttons? And why was the controllers with six buttons? That's a I lot smaller than do, I thought. I think it had to do with Street Fighter. All right, so I'm not mad at that. That's about this. That's not that big. That's without one of the sides of the switch. Where are the cords going? To charge uh, it? To the it TV. Alive. No, it's into the TV. They have an AV out. They have an AV out, and they also it's charging it as well. It's both of them. Yes. It was like a switch before a switch. It was. I'm no, sorry. don't say that. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> this it's shit look, look like, look this right look like what you got to diffuse in Counter-Strike. This shit look like a bomb. <laughs> but I can help you defuse the bomb. Like, we yes. oh, get God. a C4 and then we're going to get this. That, that shit was a Call of Duty UAV before the game dropped, bro. <laughs> Will was in Texas diffusing a Genesis. <laughs> this nigga saved Texas every morning. Oh, my God. <laughs> if this bitch hits restart, we're all doomed. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> oh man! How many? Can you, how many batteries went in it? Do we know? I don't know. I can look. Oh look. man! Like man. Man, I'm not gonna look. Listen, Sega is what it was. It was here. It did its thing, and it paved the way for everybody else, except Nintendo. It looked. It, it paved one. the way for what? PlayStation? You think? Yeah, because here's the thing, like, everything that they tried, they did too soon, like we were talking about before you got here, like with uh, Sega Saturn, I know you remember Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, they had already started doing a lot of the things that we're using now on our PlayStation and Xbox, it was just, there was, it, computers weren't that much of a thing in a household, but consoles were more bigger in a household than a computer was. Hmm. And so they were really trying to get us into, like, the computer wave, it just wasn't time, and so... They six, failed. Six, here came PlayStation. Yeah, six I'm batteries. Sure. Six How? batteries. Six batteries. Six, six double, double A batteries. batteries. Yep. That's wild. It's Still. crazy that after the Genesis and Super Nintendo, it seems like the whole 2D side scroller was completely abandoned. PlayStation didn't do it. 64 didn't do it. Like it was com like there were there were uh, traditionalist games that would come out afterwards, like the new Mega Man's and stuff. But it yeah. seemed like that style kind of died. Yeah, they, I mean they stopped doing it for even Mega Man. Like X Seven, Mega Man X Seven is three D now. But oh, they stopped, right. they, okay. they stopped too. So I mean, yeah, everyone just got away from the whole two D sky scrolling thing, which sucks. But I think yeah. it, co it costs more money to develop. I don't think so. I don't know. I think everyone's just looking for that same look. I don't know. I don't really see any any traces of Genesis on the PlayStation. I feel like PlayStation came through like Nintendo with all new shit. Well, no, like CDs, like the controllers and stuff like that. They took a lot from Sega. Kadeem, can you please pull up the Sega oh, CDs. Mega Jet? I got to read this, this breakdown for you guys. I never knew about this. In all Japan, right. Sega released the Mega Jet, a portable version of the Mega Drive for use on Japan Airlines flights. The Mega Jet requires a connection to a television screen and a power source uh, and can only be used in cars equipped with a television set inside of a cigarette lighter rece uh, receptacle. receptacle. So yeah. they put a whole console in and, a cigarette lighter. And it looks like this. In a cigarette lighter? You could power that in a cigarette lighter. I don't get that. I don't know. I don't so you would put the console. So that's the thing that reads the video game. You put that into the cigarette lighter. And then if you had a television around you somewhere on your hood of your car, you would connect it to that. And that was your new uh, Sega. But this was only for in a car? Only in, it says, it says it could be powered through the car, but then they put it on Japan Airlines. Yeah. It was supposed to be just like, if you wanted to connect it to like portable screens, because they were starting to uh, have portable screens that you could carry with you. This was one of the things, because it was very easy to transfer this to televisions. Like I said, that's why they came out with Sega Channel, to be able to use the cable. Because you had to have cable in order to get Sega Channel. I mean, shout out to Sega for trying shit. Here's the thing. For for the time, and same thing with the, the Gamecast. What's, what's the shit called that we were just looking at? Game Gear. The Game Gear. 
Same thing with that. Like at the time, I could see it being dope because you don't have like obviously we're comparing this to like newer shit or shit that we started with, but it's like at the time that was probably like the dopest shit to be able to play that shit on a on an airplane. Like like Cleo just brought up the Game Boy uh, camera and the printer. Nigga, that shit was trash. But at the time, <laughs> at the time, it was the hardest shit out. Like, I, looking back at it, man, the photos was trash. The interface was bad. I didn't really get it. By the time I got a printer, I was over it. Like, <laughs> it, it was took you, like all day to figure out how to print. And then when it finally did, it was just, oh, this is some bullshit. Right. The most terrible version of a Polaroid you were ever going to get. <laughs> yeah. Trash ass Polaroid, bro. See, man, that, Sega just, Sega was one of those. You know what the thing was, too? Like when I think like Super Nintendo was out, Super Nintendo was easy to hook up to. It was just like cartridge, cut it on, play. Sega was more kind of like on the technical side of things like Kadeem kind of deals with, just like from looking at the Nomad and stuff like that. So you kind of had to have a little sense of how to connect wires and stuff to the back of your TV. Because I remember like, yo, I ain't saying it was just me, but a lot of folks had problems with the red, yellow, and white hookup. Just right. saying. Yeah. yeah, I loved it. How about so you bring that up, Kadeem? What was the thing that we had to go back to the store and get? Is a RFU adapter? I don't know if he's still there. He's probably still there. Does anyone remember when? Yeah, my bad. I'm here. I'm here. Does anyone oh. remember when your TV did not have the red, yellow, and white cable, and you had to do the the silver screw into the back? Yeah, the cable. That's what we called it, the cable. Nintendo 64 had to release the RFU adapters. We had to go back to the store. And you know, if you get your if you get your game console on Christmas, right, you know that you're not going to the store that day. And right. then most likely you're not going back to the store the next day. Yeah. So we had to wait two more days to then go back to the store to go buy an RFU adapter Which to then play on Nintendo 64. Because why would parents know about that shit? Exactly. RF Switch, yeah. thank you. Shout out to everyone in the car. You guys remember. Look, everyone, yes, bro. Yeah. You're not alone in that struggle. You guys are not alone. I always had the RCA on deck. I, I never had it. We didn't. I, didn't have that, I didn't have that struggle because I didn't get a 64, unfortunately. So uh, No, all of them were like that. A lot of them were. Yeah, right. Then you had to go Channel 3 or Channel 4. PlayStation, Dreamcast, those were all, everything was RCA up until what? When did they switch to HDMI? Uh, oh, no, I had that. No, I'm saying I always had that. Like, it was the the three, the red, yellow, and white ones. That was the ones we didn't have. That's what I'm saying. Everything had that. Oh, yeah, no, no. Like, the one, like, I, when I had PlayStation, I had already had, like, the screw in thing. Like, I didn't have to get an adapter. I already had that. Yeah. Um, the only adjustments I really had to make for my console was to make the Japanese games. And that, in retrospect, like, now you would have to just download an add-on or something digital. But you really had to physically open your PlayStation, put the spring in, the little like side, then you had to go to the back and put the little adapter in, and then you got to play like like foreign Dragon Ball Z games. Like that oh, was yeah. actually a fun experience. Oh yeah, the Loki, good old we should have a show Marvel. that's centered on video game tech because I love tech, video game tech, and there's so much shit that came out that I missed. Like yeah. the fact that Rob from Smash Bros, I always knew he was like a physical toy and like it's something that you could sell, but I didn't really get what he did, like, did he hold games or put the game in the, the no, controller? He, like, what he the hell was those, he? Uh, those gyroscope things. So he, you would pretty much be able to press a button and control them, technically speaking, with, uh, and he would move, he would pretty much help you out in the game. He, if he picked up something, it would actually pick up uh, the uh, the path in the game for you to keep walking. He was like an early Amobi? Yeah, and the thing about it is that he, he pretty much is the only way Nintendo was allowed back into people's uh, homes because of the whole Atari thing. Like they they use Rob as as like the way to get back into people like American homes because of what happened with Atari and uh, ET how bad that was. All right, we'll hold that because this needs to be a show. Gotcha. And I want the first episode to be about Rob. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I just want to dig into old ass video Hell game tech. Yeah. Uh, what other show? What other shows we brought up to? Uh, oh, the year, oh, year year versus year because we was talking about. Uh, Today is the 25th uh, anniversary of Daytona USA on Sega Saturn, and uh, Skate 3 is 10 years old today as well. Yeah. So we were talking about all the stuff that came out in, like, 1995 and just, like, how dope 1995 was, but, like, how everybody was always like, no, 97 was the best year. We need to battle. Pick your year and battle. Just with gaming, right? You can do gaming, anything. Like, you can break it down into everything. Like, year, you can do one. Movies, game, music, just movies, music. Music, 
Like That's super dope. Let's, yeah. look at, let's look at the year of 1995 really quick in movies, Pat. Toy Story, Jumanji, Bad Boys, wow. Money Train, a Goofy movie, uh, The Indian in the Cupboard, yeah. Heavyweights, I don't know what that is. Rumble That's in the Bronx, good Casper. Movies. Good movie. I didn't like how uh, they they fucked Jackie Chan up in Rumble in the Bronx. That that scene always got to me because I was they with the beer bottles. Oh yeah. my god, they Damn. fucked him up. That yeah. I didn't like that scene at all because Jackie I Chan was always he was just like, yeah, I'm 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 fighting people. That was the first time we were just like, yo. Yeah. He was like, they, please, don't, don't, I will not try. Dog to that nigga. Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's dope. I like that. I I always wanted to do a gaming show. That was like kind of historical like that, but it's like every new iteration of a series comes out, you go back and play the very first one. So like mm. if you if we were to, if Breath of the Wild 2 came out, we would play that for the first half and then play literally the first Zelda or Call of Duty. We play the first like World War One and like see how far they've come. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I have a I have my catalog pass for whenever. I got everything Man, cataloged. That'd be lit. Yeah. So anyway, are we are we gonna get into the, at least one game? How y'all want to do this? Let's do one game. Yeah, so one game in the finals. I guess go ahead and y'all y'all choose which game y'all want to do. What and, games did y'all do so far? We haven't, we haven't done any. We haven't done any. We were we just chatting. Yeah, okay. yeah. So we were just talking about like the on this day. I thought that was a dope new segment to kind of introduce here. Um, talk about wrestling and then just some other things. So we were waiting on you to do the uh, games at the finals. Hey, thanks. Hey, can we start doing a uh, game on on Mondays just at three? Just because Squadcast usually goes over. <laughs> Yeah, 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 that's sure. fine. All right. Yeah, um, yeah, I so three PM. I'm gonna go first, man. Can I go first? I'm really excited about mine. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, go ahead. All right, guys. Uh, games that define us. These are, of course, we went really deep in our roster, actually. Uh, I had to dig really deep to find this one. Ladies and gentlemen, we were just talking about them. Jackie Chan Stuntmaster. Ooh, good one. I had to bring this one back. Jackie Chan Stuntmaster was a really, really cool game in which you would be able to fight guys with, with broomsticks and trash can bins and flip off of an 18-wheeler that was chasing you down an alleyway. It was really, you felt like you were in an action movie, and of course, your starring was Jackie Chan. Yep. You had to collect, I think, what did he collect? I want to say like Golden Dragons, but maybe that's too on the nose. But look at Jack. Look at the graphics, first of all. <laughs> oh, look at the graphics. Well, and he, and there was this comedy level to the game. That's what was always fun about Jackie. Like Pat was mentioning, he was always like happy. There was a, there was a moment of just laughter with Jackie Chan at all times. Oh, oh this yeah. looks bad. Yeah, oh, no, yeah. It, 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 well, they all. went hella cartoony. <laughs> what well, I loved about it, if you messed up, it showed you. Like if you mess up the stunt, it showed him crashing when it when it went. Yeah. I love that about this. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and skip a little bit forward to the gameplay so y'all can kind of see how yeah. this played. Uh, 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 kicks, uh. Oh, Left man. Barrel open. You get inside. You got to fight the ninjas. Boom. Uh, kick oh, in the so good. Boom. Oh, Boom. Oh, I missed this game. Bro, yeah. this looked like a beat-em-up. This looked like it a was, classic beat-em-up. It, it was, it was, it was a, a Jackie Chan beat-em-up, man. It was. It was, man. And I loved if if you wanted to like evade certain attacks, you could run up the wall and backflip over the character of the enemies. It was yep. really dope, man. I love that milk was what like re Dragon. revived him. <laughs> man, this was a great game. I no, wonder why this wasn't a series, though. I mean, yeah. shout, so shout out to Midway again. Shout out to Midway again for bringing this up. Mid Midway, man. We didn't even talk like, about it. These Midway. would be the parts right here. Like, if you didn't hit the button in time, like, that would happen. Jackie. I love it, bro. Someone yeah. just brought up the fact Jet Li had a video, a, a video game, and I totally forgot about that. Yep. What? I don't remember yeah. that. He had a PS2 had video a game. game. Yep. What yeah. was it? Uh, Something Honor. Let me look. Oh my gosh, man. I remember I rented this from Blockbuster. Rise yeah. of Honor. I saw this and I was like, yes, we actually rented this and I think uh, Rumble in the Bronx again. And I was like, well, I'm about to go do this on my PlayStation. You know yeah. how hard, I mean, we, we, we downplay it kind of a little bit, but yo, that's dope. I don't downplay this. To I have your it. own video game is dope, period. Oh, yeah. It's good though. A lot period. of niggas try to have video games and it's trash. Give me yeah. an example. It's fun. Give me one trash example of someone who tried a video game and it was just, it wasn't worth it. Shaq, Shaq Fu. Oh, man. Oh, it's with the Shaq Fu. 
always with the shit. I don't know. All right, no. Liking uh, Fifty Cent's game either. Fifty uh, Cent was good. Bulletproof was good. Oh, no, 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 no. The one on where he's he's with in sand on the front. Blood in the sand or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. 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 yeah they play that. It was. A oh scene. no, another that was trash. Uh, Michael Jordan's game. Oh, that Windy City. Windy bullshit. City game. Windy like. City is ass. Windy City's not great. It was garbage truck juice. That shit is ridiculous. Hey, did y'all did y'all play that uh, kung fu game where you were like a tiger? You were like a Shaolin tiger. Typhoon. Ty Typhoon. Typhoon. Yeah. Was Wu Tang connected to that? I don't think so. I think no, actually, actually, I, think Dream, I think DreamWorks was shockingly enough. I think DreamWorks. They never brought that character back. That character was dope. It was I'm, a dope I might game. do that. With I remember the, this game. Typhoon Wrath of the Tiger, I think it's what it was called, bro. Good game. Yeah. Good game. It was a really good game. Yeah, bro. I love that game. Wow. No, nah, Pat just brought back the heavy hitter with that one. I don't know why I always thought Wu Tang was considered. Was it, Is there like a Wu Tang looking symbol in the title or something? I always thought Wu Tang was considered. I think they made the music, didn't they? I think they, they had, they had the a lot music. of hip hop, like the hip hop uh, soundtrack for sure. There was a hip hop soundtrack for sure on that game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that yeah was so that's my pick, guys. Jackie Chan, Stunt Master. Uh, we knew Jackie for doing his own stunts in his films, for him to have a video game where he had to defeat ninjas, try to, I don't know what the actual end goal was. Since I don't even remember who the final boss was, but this is definitely worthy of a second playthrough, even though the graphics are comedically hilarious. Oh yeah. I like them. I like it too. Uh, they look like siphon filter, those trash ass faces. Yes. <laughs> That's a lot of time this came out though. Um, I didn't beat this game, unfortunately, cause uh, I only had it for three days. And so I didn't get that far cause it was a rental, but for the three days I had it, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I would not mind doing a playback. Yes, sir. Hey, shout out to Zarius Johnson. Appreciate it. Uh, he's shouting out uh, one series that defined him was the SmackDown versus Raw series uh, starting in 06. I mm -hmm. definitely liked the early wrestling games. And I, I mean, early for me, like PlayStation 1, like SmackDown. I thought it, I thought it originally just said SmackDown. I think I played SmackDown versus Raw, but I was really playing video games um, when wrestling was out with like SmackDown, Beg for Mercy, WrestleMania, like those first PlayStation N64 ones for yeah. sure. That's what most people were. Uh, I remember I was playing them in like Super Nintendo and stuff too. So uh, I remember they had, ah, what was I think it was like Royal Rumble. And they had uh, IRS. It was this dude that was like buttoned up with the white uh, button up glasses. They're like an IRS. Like Bray Wyatt's daddy. Oh, yeah, yeah, Bray Wyatt's daddy. Uh, Pat, you remember that dude we showed you with the crazy ass mask and the blonde uh, dreads? He had like a, a, a special effects mask, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah. Dude, dude I'm talking about, that's his father. He, uh, he wrestled. He had uh, this crazy ass clothesline as his finisher. And they had it in the game that was unbeatable. Like if you hit, if you hit, if you got hit with it, automatic defeat. That's such a dumb character, IRS. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was horrible. It was actually based off his name. Like that was his real name, I believe. It was that was like, his initials? Yeah. Initials, I believe. And so they went, they went off of the whole thing with that. Uh, so is, I, I, is it cool if I go for my uh, choice? Go for it. Um, I'm getting straight into it. I don't care if you don't know it. If you know it, it is a dope game. It's very simple. Uh, don't got a lot of like twists and turns to it, but it got twists and turns to it, if you know what I'm saying. My pick is Driver on PlayStation. Oh, wow. Driver was my shit. I love this game. Literally, you are a wheel man, a professional wheel man. Your mission is to either it's like need for speed, hot pursuit, uh, with a little bit of Grand Theft Auto mixed into it, and your job is to drive around. You are the wheel man, you gotta get away, you gotta require to get through some stunts, everything. You just blazing through the city. Now, would I recommend us to play this uh on here? Not really. But this is one of the games that define me because it really uh, – I always love cars. I always love driving. So to be able to have a game where you're just a straight wheelman, and especially being a fan of the Italian job, 
this was one of the games I was just like, yes, let's get it. Time trials, unlocking different type of cars. This was me. So is he, is this open world? Is he, is he racing? Like what is, what's happening right no, now? It's open world. So you're basically given a, a, a mission. So it was like the, one of the first open world, but it was like a city. And, uh, you literally had to get away. So you couldn't get all the way up to your day. If you got your damage all the way up, your car would stall. Um, it was basically like having five stars in GTA. That's basically you know, that's what I was gonna say. Is it like an early GTA where you have to just evade the cops all the time? Yeah, exactly. Exactly, exactly. How big was the city? How big was the open world? It was pretty big. Like it had it had a very massive map. Uh, when it had when it came out with two and three, you had different areas. So I think you go like San Francisco. Um, I think he was like in Tokyo too, and some other stuff and everything. But I think at Driver it was just like one stage, but it was like a massive city. Could you get out? No, no. No, you, you stayed in the car. All in the car. Just the car, yeah. That was it. I remember when Driver 2 was coming out, I was like, dog, they went so hard on the marketing for this game. It was every freaking where. I remember seeing billboards in LA crazy, heavy WWE commercials as well, being sponsored some of the pay-per-views. I don't think I ever played it, though. I think I never got a chance to play Driver. I'll tell you what. They push this shit out of this game in the little demos like yep. those little demo cds that came in magazines and all that shit so i remember playing driver and i don't know if i played driver too i remember the um the art more than the first one but i for sure played driver i might have played driver too and i just to be honest i don't think the demo got me enough to want to play the full game it kind of had like a twisted metal i it was almost like we weren't ready for it until Grand Theft Auto, but it was like yeah. one of those like building blocks that led up to it. So yeah, so, I never really got little, into it. Little fun fact about Driver 3 is that uh, there was a huge controversy with the review uh, process for it. Uh, the review, they it, it came out allegedly that the company paid uh, the reviewers to give it a good rating on IGN and all that stuff back in the day for Driver 3. Not these two, oh. the, the, th the third one. So video game had payola too. Oh, payola, right. did they get caught? How they get caught? I yeah, forgot how it came out. Uh, I watched a document. somebody snitched. I watched <laughs> some, it's, there was someone on YouTube that did a whole story about it. So I mean, it happened. It, it it's pretty much you know official that 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 did someone, happen. Someone hacked Franklin IGN's emails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got all that shit. That's dumb as fuck. Yeah. But it's like, the crazy thing about that is like. Duh, nigga. Like, you don't think Call of Duty and all these people are paying reviewers? Like, right. that's happening all across the board. Rotten across Tomatoes, board. all that shit. You know, but you know that now, though. Like, back, back then, like... They just got one. the early snub. Yep. No, nah, but think about, like, reviews, like, you only... For one, you only had a few sources for reviews. Like, back then, when, like, when this was out, like, movies was Ebert and Roper. Uh, that's what you, who, who told you reviews on movies. Guys. Here it was like I forgot it was like a website. It was like game something. That's where you learned about the reviews for these games. So it wasn't a lot of sources that were telling you these things. So the ones that were, if you were paying them off, and again you didn't know people didn't know these things and that was happening. So that's why it became a big deal around this time. This came so it was kind of like the same thing with wrestling when people started finding out that some parts of it is staged. They like what? But mm -hmm. for most people, they just like yeah. You think there's still people finding out? About that, yeah, yeah. Really? You, I mean, if you still say wrestling is fake, then you don't know about wrestling. Yeah, I mean, there's plagiarism. I mean, the last thing that I've kind of seen with controversy about reviews was plagiarism. Um, that's pretty much it that I've seen the last couple years that, that kind of made it a big deal. There's a lot of plagiarism going on. People review the game, and then someone from IGN you, use the same exact words, everything, and put up their video as well. So, so literally I, they just caught so what they did was they wrote their own review yeah sent it out to all the networks they sent them the direct deposit and was like hey bro put, paste this on the on the, on the page yeah it. it'd be a few little things that switched around yeah but right. the one thing i'll say about driver uh that pat brought up and i think that they kind of messed up on was it was a great concept but the thing was the first one didn't really grab you like that and so like even like how he said like if the demo didn't grab you when you got the game, the game was cool, but it was kind of redundant. And so it was like, okay. And so when Driver 2 came, they fixed that with a lot of stuff and different missions. But by that time, if you didn't want to just have been moved by the first one just a little bit to kind of check it out, 
people were already kind of done with it. And then they did the, try to do the same I thing. I can see like, why Grand Theft Auto killed them off because it's like, yeah. it wasn't a lot of details to the city, but like now I'm realizing now that I don't have that option, just how important getting out was. Like, it's almost like the car part was cool, but it was almost like one of the least interesting parts of Grand Theft Auto because Grand Theft Auto got big with the shooting and the carjacking and like a lot of things that required you to be outside of the car. Right, right, um, right. Obviously the three star system, it seems like they have their own version of that, which is like a felony bar, yeah. <laughs> which yeah. is pretty funny. Yeah. Very vague though, too. Like what what happened? Like there's not like a very. Is well, it, the thing is, it was kind of like yeah, but that was the thing. It went down as like so like normally how stars will drop if like the helicopter doesn't see you, cops will start to lose sight of you. That's what it was doing. So like if you were starting to evade the cops, your felony ball would start dropping. Right. But two, also if you were hitting things like the poles and stuff like that, and those things were falling down. Your felony would go back up because of course you're leaving the trail for the cops. So safe to say, if it was six nine cheat code, the felony bar would never go up. Probably not. Probably not. And everything would be in rainbows. They gonna be putting cheap like snitching in Grand Theft Auto to to lower your wanted. That'd be crazy. Right, <laughs> Snitch Lane, Rat Boulevard. You're impervious there. No damage. Shout out to Ryan Keels, uh, uh, out here uh, complimenting Black Blasphemy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Just, uh, we look forward to expanding it for you guys. Um, doing, it again. doing it again. I'm about to go there. All right, cool. Uh, any uh, any last thoughts on Driver? Great game. Uh, uh, great marketing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, once again, just like I was talking about with Sega, uh, one of those games I think helped define us because it helped pave the way for other great games and stuff like that, like Grand Theft Auto. Seeing something new, say, oh, that's cool. Let's add this to what we're doing. And so in my eyes, I know somebody who ever made the game might get a little offended. I feel like Driver lives on a little bit every time you're playing Grand Theft Auto. Seeing, seeing the footage, did it does look like a very necessary building block to get to Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. So that's, that's dope. All right, Pat, um, what you got? Bring it on, Pat. And last but not least... I got the cussing, slanging, woman womanizing 64 game that helped popularize first person shooters. Duke Nukem 64. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, Pat. Hail to the king. If you were but a young lad like me, you know why this was important, okay? Even even if I was like an older teenager or, you know, in college, I would still enjoy this game. But being a little kid and getting access to this game was everything. Because Facts. not only did it put... Here's the thing. My dad told me this once, and I, I never realized how important this was. When my dad would get me shooting games it was very important that I wasn't shooting other people. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was always like, he always made sure it was like aliens or monsters or something like that. And I didn't realize the psychology of that until I was an older and I started seeing like, oh shit, Ninja Turtles also switched all of their people, all of their enemies to robots and stuff so that they can slice without using blood and all this kind of stuff. So there's a lot of psychological things that go into marketing to kids. Right. So. They did it in such a genius way because you weren't shooting other people, but you were still getting the references. Like all the cops were big ass pigs. You know what I mean? It, it was and it and it it was at a time where like first person shooters weren't popping like that. So we're used to this whole other style. Like you know, this ties into what I said earlier about a lot of video games being side scroller two Ds and them abandoning that and trying other things. Now I'm not, you know, I'm I'm positive this isn't the first first person shooter, but the reason why this got so popular is because that style was like just emerging as like, you know, dope as opposed to like the early video game styles. Yeah. So it was like it wasn't it was it was just not only a mix of like just how you play, but it was just like the raunchiness, man. When you were a little boy, like the <laughs> fact that there are hidden naked girls in every level that you have to find and it's like he was always cussing and it was kind of like it was it was pretty gory like he was you know he, he was always talking about sticking his foot up somebody's ass and yeah. it was just it was just dope because like it just came like right on time and it's kind of like sailed under the radars of all parents you know like yeah. mortal Kombat was an outrage it was like 
blood oh i can't believe this we need ratings on video games but something like this like i don't remember a duke nukem outrage i don't remember parents being like tripping at all because it was just like yeah you're this arnold schwarzenegger ripoff which a lot of 80s music movies were sort of like using that you know that that character type so it was just like this arnold schwarzenegger action hero that just you know killed aliens and that's as much as the parents knew about but for us man we were getting like Partial nudity, cussing, adult switch situations. I'm, I'm just saying that because that's what it'd be saying in the ratings. Yeah. But <laughs> this game was dope, man. And like the the weapon choices, you if, if you were melee, you were just kicking niggas in the chest. It was just dope. Like mm-hmm. the weapon was the shit. Oh, yeah. I <laughs> will so, say, uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So I was gonna, just to talk about the weapons for a second. Of course, you had the handgun, right? Yep. You had yep. the little Glock. Then you had the shotgun, which we see him using right now. Shotgun then you had the work. double Uzis. Yeah. Right, and then you had the pipe bomb launcher, mm-hmm. and then you had the pipe bombs by themselves that you can detonate like that. Yep. The weapon artillery for Duke Nukem was crazy. Now, I don't think I ever got past the fourth level or fifth level of this game. I've never beat Duke Nukem, but really? seeing it, it makes me want to go back and try to beat it. And then, uh, yeah, the music, the freaking state. The, the thing that bothered me the most about Duke Nukem was that you, if you got lost in the level, you were screwed. Oh man, you, you had to suck. restart the level and try everything again because you didn't know what to press. There was hidden switches. A light switch could have opened something behind you, but you had no clue. There's no that's map. Very true. I think that's that's sort of like reminiscent of uh, Doom. You know how like Doom just gave you an open area and you just had to wander around until you saw niggas. Like yeah. that was that was like I remember even the first level, this level that they're in right now. The uh, no, I'm sorry. This might be the second one. No, it's the city like, with the movie theater. This the first level. Is the second or first? First, first level. level. That's okay, movie. it's either in the first or the second. Like this, the, the last part of the game is in this really back loading area with trucks and boxes. And it's like, it's not like, it's not linear. Like you have to do a whole, like you said, a whole bunch of other stuff and switches and going and backtracking. So it had almost like adventure elements within a shooter because like something like Call of Duty, you just go forward and you just have to deal with shit. But it's like, this game was almost just like a, 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 a puzzle within a first person shooter and it's like the cultural references that they had were dope like the fact that the first move the first level was at a movie theater that had posters everywhere and you can like go up to the, where the projector is yep it's like a lot of dope shit about this game and when it and when it got like difficult there was still like cheats like there was this was in the era where of like cheat codes and with good old me and my god brother, mode. like if it, god, if it was mode, god armor. mode yep Multiplayer was a really big part of this game for me as well. Oh, like yeah, being yeah, able yeah. to play with my friends, four four controllers locked in. Everyone had a rocket launcher. Can you, do you remember the football field map? Oh, of course. That's that's the last that's, level of the game. Like that's where you. That's the last level. That's the final bosses. Final boss. Oh, final. so you guys might have beaten it. No, I mean I have, but that's me. I have not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because there was also a Duke Nukem on PlayStation that was different, right? Yeah, I, there's a few nice. different. And the thing about this one that I want to bring up is there is no music in this game. On the N64 one, which made it even scarier, honestly. Yeah, there was it, huh? I mean, there was main menu music and finishing and that music. It. That, that was it. it, though, but there's no wow. music. Everything so it is, is scary as hell to hear all these damn aliens everywhere. And that's, yeah. that's, what, I, that's what I most remember, like, remember about Wait, this game. Wait, that wasn't an option? That wasn't something no. that you toggled, least, though? Not on the N64. Maybe on the PlayStation. I didn't play the PlayStation. Oh, the PlayStation 4, like, you just, when you start it, you're thinking it's playing, but it's not. Like, Doom yeah. was kind of like that, too, because that was like, a lot of people don't know that Duke Nukem was actually on PC before it came here to 64. And I'm going to say, honestly, I love it on PC way better because you can move. It moves a lot smoother, just like how Doom did, just like how Quake was. And so it trans. It was just like how Doom started moving over the consoles. So did Duke Nukem and stuff. So, uh, but yeah, it didn't have any music. And yeah. it was one of the first ones. To re- it was the first ones that was more pop culture reference, like you said, like the movie theaters, having the uh, Duke Nukem in front and stuff like that. Because remember, you never really saw him. Mm-hmm. No. So it was just like, Doom was dope. They wanted to figure out how to do first person shooters. And it was like, let's make an Arnold Schwarzenegger boobs, pop culture, they're going to buy it. And of course we did. Yep. Yep. No, uh, it was lit. Well, yeah. I got to know your co-sign on this. John uh, Cena to play Duke Nukem in the live action movie? Hell yeah. Hell I think so. Not no more, but hell yeah. Back in the day, yeah. Yeah, yeah. back in the day. Wow. That would have been great. Yeah. I still say John Cena should have played Robocop. 
Cena would have been a hard RoboCop. How? Right. No, a, lot of cur- no. lot of cursing. I don't know. I don't know if like John exactly. Cena's, John Cena's brand, too clean. Bro. They'd have been like, oh, uh, so you don't place, remember him in Step Sisters? I mean, MG. Molly, Mexican, weed, coding. But he was charactery as hell. He had tattoos. Wait, John Cena doesn't cuss? That's for the kids. Like his WWE persona, the John Cena, you can do anything. Nah, they ain't pulling that card. Man, Robo okay. all day. I watch it. I but you going to do Duke Nukem? Wait a minute. You going to do Duke Nukem? He'd be dope for Duke Nukem, though. He'd no, be you, super you gotta go back to ruthless aggression, though. You gotta go back to ruthless aggression. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna move on. I don't want to talk about no, that. Yeah, that. exactly. I, I, that's super dope that you or pointed like, out that there was no music. That's not yeah. a really a typical video game movie. It is, bro, and that's what scared me so much about this game when I was younger, because I was trying to play this game, but I, all I could hear was the damn aliens everywhere, bro. Yeah. That so, whole, I remember one of the sounds, it was like, ooh, marrr. Yeah, that was the pig shit. <laughs> that was that fucking pig, bro. Like, you hear the pig snorting, but don't know where you're coming from and stuff. Right. Dude, yeah. We played it on arcade tokens. We didn't really have a sound, so we couldn't hear anything. We just assumed there was music because, like, when they first start off, it's just oh, like you go to the stage. Yeah, yeah, and it's just like, oh shit! And so but, you think it's playing, but it's really not. And just so you guys know, this is actually out on the PS4. Uh, Duke Nukem Mega Sun Edition is what it's called. So is it this version? It's this version. Oh, I'm downloading it. Just so you're you know. kidding. PS4? On the PS4. PS4 Mega Sun Edition is what this is called. Uh, oh, that's done. It's just yeah. updated. It's updated. Oh, yeah. It'll be easier, everything. Yeah. Easy. I'm doing it. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah. So, uh, final thoughts. Final thoughts, fellas, on Duke Nukem. Nigga, final thoughts is I'm about to play it again. That's <laughs> fucking <laughs> right now. Hey, man, then that means we got to run it on, on Hero all the hey, man. This, this show is making me buy more games. <laughs> I'm already yeah. halfway through Ape Escape 2. Great game. Oh, yeah, I still got to finish Ape Escape. Yeah. Man. Oh. That's lit. This show is going to make our Twitches just that much better. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. 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 So, question. So, we, we, we have our three. So, now it's time for us to play a call. Play, download, and delete. So, play, download, and delete. We have Driver. We have um, Cleo. What was the one you had? Jackie Chan Stuntmaster. Jackie Chan Stuntmaster. Ooh. And Duke Nuka. All right, I'll go first. All right, Pat, what you got? I'm deleting Driver. <laughs> I'm, I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm deleting Driver. Uh, this is tough because I don't know what I would play. Obviously, I'm going to play Duke Nukem. That purchase is happening tonight. However, if I have the option of Jackie Chan, I don't know which one I would go after first because I remember how much fun Jackie Chan was. Yeah. So I'm going to go play Duke Nukem, download Jackie Chan's Adventure, delete Driver. Okay. Um, I'm going to go play Jackie Chan Adventure. Uh, just uh, I remember it was so much fun. I would I can continue playing that even now. Um, download Duke Nukem only because just I, I know it was cool to not have maps try to figure it out, man. But at some points, I was like, yo, fuck this, especially when you figure it out. It was this hole in the building that you can't really see, and you had to jump in there and go upstairs, and that took you to the next level. I was like, man, F y'all. Oh, I'm man, F Duke Nukem. Facts. And so, uh, and I would delete driver just because you know we have Grand Theft Auto already and stuff like that. That was a stepping stone for them, but I think they would have figured that out anyway, just because that's originally technically what they were. Uh, actually, so now that I think about it, I'm wrong for saying that. Uh, Grand Theft Auto was somewhat already doing that. What? And it was up top. It was a top view, and they were in uh, because first the original Grand Theft yeah. Auto one and two were in London, right? And yeah. so you had to. It was just up. And so you would be driving and stuff and trying to get away and everything like that. And so Driver just made it to where it was from a 3D view. Okay. Would I'm going to go with uh, Play Jackie Chan because I want to beat it. Uh, download Duke Nukem, which I am currently doing. And then Driver, again, I never played it. It didn't really appeal to me. I just got to appreciate the marketing for it. I'm just like, the marketing is great. You guys are going so hammer time on this. It's like, y'all making this like it's a movie. 
I'm pretty you're sure. On top of it than me. I'm pretty sure the, trans, the people who did the marketing for Transporter just looked at Duke Nuke. I mean, excuse me, just looked at the driver marketing. It was like, just do that. Simple. The Jason Statham film. Do what they did. Low key. Yeah. I like the first one. It got a little ridiculous though. <laughs> oh yeah. So um, are we doing that time thing? We are doing the time capsule. So, as I've said, thousand years into the future, um. The ocean has swallowed us. The aqua people are here. Um, Atlantis is real. And Aquaman is black. And I don't want to hear no questions about it. I and agree. Find this time capsule. And the time capsule got our video games. This time, though, I'm changing it up. Consoles. What consoles are going into the time capsule? It's a good one. PS Vita. I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it out of the top. I'm just gonna uh, go. Ahead. Why? I'm putting why? mine in. There. Why? Hey, see, all y'all don't know how amazing that console is. Y'all wouldn't understand unless you had one. The cross save. I beat Shovel Knight front to back because of that Vita. Okay. You said I like that's achievement. No, Shovel Knight's an amazing game. If you didn't play Shovel Knight, you wouldn't understand. Okay. Is it good? It's amazing. What is it's that, Switch? Hard. I tried. It's hard to get into. Well, that's because you're not good at platformers. Anyway, Damn. Shovel Knight. Amazing. I, I, then you can cross-save. You can literally download your save on your Vita, upload it back into the cloud, go back on your PS4, play it on your screen. So you can play it anywhere. Same game. No, the Vita was slept on. The Vita's an incredible console. I think just by saying. that time when the Vita dropped, people had jumped off the train simply just because they had already had enough PSPs. Yeah. And we were waiting for, like, the new PlayStation console to drop. I'm like, yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna- yeah. Console, so I'm going to throw in, I'm going to have to throw in the PS2. I think there's some legendary games in that, in that catalog. Um, I, I think one console was still getting games while the newer, new, new gen version was out. And I'm pretty sure it was the PS2. I think when the PS3 came, they had started developing new games for that for certain. But there was games still being developed for PS2 in that time. Oh, yeah, that is true. Like, some of the games that were for PS3, they made PS2 platforms for you to play it on. I do remember that because PS2 was so big, and they just kept – they brought PS3 just to compete with Xbox. They were still pushing out stuff to PS2. Big facts. Yeah, because I think uh, Batman Arkham was one of them. You could play Batman Arkham Asylum on PS2. Jeez. Is that where it started at PS2? No, no, no. It didn't. It didn't. It started on PS3, but they made a version for you, I think, to play on PS2. I think. I could be wrong on that. Duke Nukem 3D 20th Anniversary Edition, uh, $5 right now. I just had to go. Kadeem, I was that's just the about one. to say, which one did you download? That's the one? The 20th I think edition. I think it's a Megaton Edition. Make sure you guys find it. I think it's called Megaton or something like that. Let me make sure, though. Ain't no, uh, ain't no other Duke Nukems. Let it's just check. Duke Nukem World Tour 3D. I just started it. Let me see. This is looking very familiar. LA Meltdown. Yeah, That's there we go. LA Meltdown is the PlayStation version. Yeah. Okay. And yup. This, oh, yo, this is crazy. The graphics are updated. Are they? Not, not, not to a, not to a great standard, but they're better than what we played when we okay. just played at your house that last time. Oh, that was. Oh, horrible. this oh, is dope. That was horrible. Oh. Uh, well, while y'all doing that, my pick is Sega. Right? The Sega. Say the original Sega Genesis, all the games. You'll know what it is. You'll have fun. Not trying to compete with nobody else, but you will enjoy it. I'm sure all the little Aqua lads will be in there just like, yo, this little blue spinny guy is the shit. I get that. Look, the Sega has some iconic games, man. We're not just going to say only Sonic. It got some hits. The Sega guy hits. Well, I said Game Gear. Y'all treat that shit like a domestic dispute. That I mean, was I, ridiculous. It just came in fire. Game like, Gear oh. is ridiculous. We can't not say that. It, why is it ridiculous? It's bad. It's bad, Will. How? Y'all, how? Because it was because big? Because we've seen all the other things that they can do with portable. That was Right, bad. but that didn't happen until after Game Gear. Remember, before Game Gear, you had Game Boy with that shitty-ass throw-up green color with all the games. Right, but you. But it had Tetris. Like, Boom. Boom. Yes. Yeah, also, like if you showed me the Atari, which was before a lot of things, I would also appreciate that a lot more than the Game Gear. Okay. Oh, okay. downloaded it. Yeah, I, I didn't. I just found the RPG on the first level. Well, already you you playing it already? I'm playing it right now. <laughs> Mine's ready in two minutes. I already bought it. 
<laughs> I would say what I leave, I would probably just leave a Game Boy Color, to be honest. Like, I think the them, us crossing into handheld with colors, maybe throw on Super Mario Land 2. Uh, that, I think that that's, I think that's a good rep, rep of us. Didn't, didn't Pokemon Yellow come out on Game Boy Color? Yellow? I think yeah. they all came out on color, right? Or right? was the first two just regular Game Boy? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think all... thinking when you said color, those were the ones you threw in with uh, Super Mario. Yeah, I guess there were some that weren't in color, huh? I guess, I guess red and blue did come out on regular. Yeah, they did. They came out on regular Game Boy. Uh, Pat, they added a map. What? They put a map. <laughs> oh, New map. There's a map. Yo, when you get the game, press press the up on the D-pad, bro. You going to flip. They put a map in the game, finally. I'm not going to hear from them for the next two days. What do you mean a map? I thought they a map. map. Like, you can actually see the level for all the things that you need to go do now. Instead of us just wandering randomly. Oh, a- they put a mini map? Yes. Wow. Press up on the D-pad and you'll see it. This is crazy. Right, I'm in. I'm, I'm playing. I'm now. playing. I have to be. Ah, to get the game now. We got a map. I might have to go and get up in this. So, Thirty seconds left. All right. Yeah. I guess all right. are we are we gonna do quarantine and stream with this, or is it too late? It's already done. The damage is done for all y'all. Y'all think well, we can? We can. I'm just gonna be a couple levels in. Big facts. <laughs> well, I'm about it. Let's just run it. So, all right. All right. Well. That has been another episode of Games That Define Us. We want to yeah. thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, make sure that y'all like, subscribe, share these videos, turn on y'all notifications for arcade tokens, all dev gaming, and all dev because you know Ron here is almost seven days a week bringing you the gaming action. And make sure uh, y'all check out our arcade tokens Twitch, our individual Twitches: Will Farrow, Patrick Cloud, Cleo Thomas, Kadeem as well. Kadeem, what is your Twitch handle? It's it's Kadeem. We'll, we'll we'll get to that one day. I don't stream it. I don't stream enough. I'm streaming everyone else. But he's, but he's he's gearing up, y'all. He's gearing up. So, uh, but yeah. So we appreciate y'all stopping by. I've been Will Farrow. Phil Thomas, aka Mr. Slick Living. I'm Patrick Cloud. And he is learning to braid again. And we will catch y'all next time.